Christmas and welcome to Historic Trinity Episcopal Cathedral in the heart of downtown San Jose. My name is Julia McCray Goldsmith. I have the privilege of serving as priest in charge of this congregation and in that capacity it is my delight to welcome you here online or in person. There is a place at God's table for you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you and also with you let us pray O God who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity your son Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen a reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. 
He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 84, verses 1 through 8. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house, they will be always praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose heart are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God and look upon the face of your anointed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem every year for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. You know, in the Roman Catholic tradition, although not in the Episcopal Church, curiously, the gospel we just heard is proclaimed on the Sunday after Christmas Day for what is called the Feast of the Holy Family. And why not? Why not honor this intrepid family? We just heard of Mary and Joseph's fateful journey to Bethlehem, of Jesus's long heralded birth. So why not gather up all the rather slim biblical material we have about his growing up and try to flesh out a picture of Jesus's family life, perhaps as a model for our own. And what Luke's gospel gives us today is a pretty recognizable family portrait. We saw an errant adolescent and some worried parents with that Jesus specific twist that he's actually wiser than his parents when it comes to the things of God. And then we have the apparently neglectful father and mother who forgot about their son for an entire day of travel and had to spend a whole other day traveling back to Jerusalem to look for him. Now there's some parental dysfunction right there. 
but it's okay, right? Because it makes Jesus's family seem more like any of ours, right? I say this in all humility as a parent who certainly messed up repeatedly, something my own sons are only too happy to remind me of. <laughs> we all know a thing or two about messy families, no? Lord knows many of us have lived through much family complexity over the recent holidays. Hopefully we've had some great meals and some good quality time with our close relatives over the holidays. But you and I both know that wasn't true for everyone. Some of us were lonely over the holidays. Some of us were grieving the loss of people who would normally be part of our family gatherings. Some of us were quarantined during COVID or unable to travel because of weather. Some of us have complicated and painful relationships with our families. I myself struggle to support a close relative whose mental illnesses flare over every holiday, which is why I find myself wondering about what, just what does the church mean when we refer to the holy family? Note that the Bible doesn't ever use that term to describe Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. The understanding of their threesome as a model of family holiness emerged as a theme in classical art in the 14th century, but it wasn't really popularized as a concept until a French bishop founded an order in the name of the Holy Family in the 17th century. And if we look to Mary and Joseph as a model for how to be a family now, well, there just isn't much material to work with. We do know with confidence that Jesus had parents who cared very deeply for him, kept him safe in the face of grave political threat and exile to Egypt, and who saw to his religious education, the latter of which happened in the context of extended family. Recall that he was traveling with parents, relatives, and friends to observe the Passover in Jerusalem. Now, just because the Bible does not specifically refer to Jesus and his parents as the Holy Family, however, doesn't mean that the Bible isn't chock full of family stories that we can learn from. Not necessarily because they're role models for us, however. Recall Adam and Eve and their rivalrous sons, Noah and the whole family of creative beings cooped up in an ark, Adam trafficking his wife and Isaac and Rebecca and their trickster son Jacob, whose multiple wives birthed his nation-building progeny. And as the saying goes in the Bible, surely affirms families. <laughs> you can't live with them and you can't procreate without them. Indeed, it wouldn't be far from the truth to think of the Hebrew scriptures as a record of God's vast and vastly dysfunctional family into which Jesus Christ was born in due season, the heir to royal rogues and prostitutes, if Matthew's long genealogy is to be trusted. And yes, his family was holy, just as so many families who do their best to listen to God, forgive each other, and care for vulnerable children are. But beyond those intriguing stories of family visits to the temple, there's just not that much we can learn from Jesus's human family of origin. On the other hand, Jesus himself did have plenty to say about families, some of it not so encouraging. For example, in the eighth chapter of Luke, Jesus denies his biological mother and brothers and saying, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Further on in the 14th chapter, he says, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters cannot be my disciple. Huh? How much? So much for the holy biological family. But families, families nevertheless, they feature prominently in Jesus's parables. Their members appear at weddings and family vineyards and in rivalry as obedient and disobedient children. Perhaps none more obviously so than in the beloved parable of the prodigal son. You remember that story, right? A, a father gave an inheritance to his sons and the younger squandered it in dissolute living, as Luke records it. 
eventually that wayward son repents, returns to his father's house, where his older brother whines about the unfairness of it all. Now that part, that sounds like the families we know, right? But, but the father's house, the place where the prodigal son returned without even knowing whether he'd be accepted back. I will say to him, thought the repentant son, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me, treat me like one of your hired hands. Then comes the part we all love. Jesus teaches, but while he was far off, still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. What? What was 12-year-old Jesus doing in the Jerusalem temple when his parents left him behind? I think, I think he was learning about his father's house. Not his father Joseph's house, although I'm sure Joseph was a fine father. About, but about that home for the heart, where we are all and always welcome. At any age, regardless of what we've done, our home is with God. That's the lesson that Jesus was learning in the temple. And a lesson we here at Trinity are called to model and to teach as well. Let us, let us as a church be that kind of welcoming father's house. You know, Cathedral Warden Steve Sosnowski described us so beautifully, naming virtually every member of our extended church family in his Christmas Eve Facebook post that began, I wanted to share a moment of grace, peace, and love with you. We, we can be that kind of father's house, graceful, peaceful, and full of love for the curious 12-year-old, for the young adult seeking a change of heart, and for each other. And then, God willing, um, here's what I know about families. <laughs> All families are kind of a mess, and all families are holy. All parents are imperfect, and all children are wayward to some degree. Truly, it's a miracle of God that any of us survive to adulthood. And then, God willing, we find partners and marry and make households and families of choice. In the immortal words of Archbishop Tutu, whose mortality caught up with him this week, God's dream, God's dream is that you and I and all of us will realize that we are family, that we are made for togetherness, for goodness, and for compassion. I'd venture to say that the biblical measure of family holiness is not so much in the configuration of the family, but in their capacity to help every member find their way home to their father's house, which could be the home of their biological parents, but might just as well be another place of grace, peace, and love. It might be the campus ministry that supports a young person's vocational goals. It might be the AA group that accepts us as we are, but doesn't leave us there. It might be the family shelter, which Trinity supports. It might be online in daily morning prayer where we listen to each other and to God. It might be right here in this little historic wooden church perched on the edge of St. James Park as Steve Sosnowski wrote. It might be this very Sunday morning where we come to meet our common father and know that we are welcomed home. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land in all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. And now I would invite you, wherever you are, in whatever community you may find yourself in, in whatever way is safe and appropriate, to share with each other the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. faithful of your church, 
who trust the Holy Eucharist to be your body and blood given for us, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot receive you sacramentally, we beseech you spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Good people of God, may Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and things heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace in blessing. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.